With the power delivery from the power supply seemingly stable and quiet now, I thought I should get onto the control software that will make the whole thing work. The MOSFET power modules are not the final versions, but I think they will be good enough, at least good enough for me to get an idea of what I'm going to need software-wise. So two things I need to know to start, what control voltage I need to supply the MOSFET modules, and how is temperature going to affect that voltage. After all the modifications I did to the power modules, I wanted to again chart the DAC value to current value. Certainly the lower end looks much smoother now. Nice curve, very much like the admittance chart for the MOSFET itself, and that's probably not a coincidence. By about 4 amps, looking quite like a straight line. I think I messed up taking this reading, but it's not far off and it doesn't affect what I'm looking for. So one of the main things from this chart, from about 1 amp up, I'm averaging around 25 milliamps per each step of the DAC. Down here at the lower part, it's close to 20 milliamps a step. Up here, it's over 26 milliamps a step. Of course, while it looks like a straight line, it really isn't. And while 25 milliamps a step may seem like very low resolution, I had figured that if I were to build the power amps to perfection, using every bit of the DAC's output range, I would be at a little over 16 milliamps a step. And I didn't think I would get that, but I was hoping to get 20. I still think I can get down to around 20 milliamps a step without too much trouble. If I can, I'll be very happy with that. What's not in that chart is temperature, and I haven't spent much time checking on what kind of temperature drifts I'm going to have to deal with, but I think now is the time to take a look at it. I'm going to apply a fixed value to the DAC register, so there is no feedback correction for this at all. I've got about 10 volts going to the load, and will set it as close to 2 amps as I can. I'm going to start at the MOSFET modules. The MOSFET modules themselves don't seem to be very sensitive to temperature. Not really unexpected, since the op amps that set the voltage are a zero drift type. Anything less than about 20 milliamps of change, I won't be able to correct for, at least not without some major modifications. Main control board may be a bit sensitive, still not that much. Yeah, a little bit of temperature sensitivity, maybe 10 milliamps. I'll take a closer look at the main control board, see if any one part is touchy. This is the 3.3 volt regulator area. I've got the air running at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, so it doesn't take long to heat an area up. I would expect this to be the most sensitive. The output of the 3.3 volt regulator directly affects the output of the DAC. Well, that is a very good regulator. That's almost no drift at all. That is much better than I was expecting. And the 5 volt regulator? Pretty stable, I would say. Though a little drift on the 5 volt rail wouldn't have as much effect as a drift on the 3.3 volt rail. The microcontroller. I think I may have overheated it to get that kind of change. It was too hot to touch, so it was too hot. So a little bit of temperature sensitivity for both the 3.3 volt regulator and the CPU, I would say. Neither of them enough to be a bother. I'm going to stop the fans. Only 20 watts of load going at the moment, so I'll see if I can throw a little extra heat at the MOSFETs. If my voltage current curve, looking like the admittance of the MOSFET, is not a coincidence, I would expect some temperature drift, as the admittance of the MOSFET is temperature dependent to some extent. This drift will probably be less noticeable at higher currents. But yeah, that's been the most temperature sensitive part so far, other than overheating the microcontroller. This is the admittance chart for the MOSFET, and I'm down here on the floor, but can see there is quite a bit of difference between the 25 degree and 125 degree line and the gain of the op amps on the module is not high enough to fully compensate for that difference. At least that's what I'm thinking. But with the maximum expected of 30 amps through the MOSFET, my assumption that the drift will be lower at higher currents is probably not correct. This may end up being the bulk of the temperature drift of the load. I'll plug back in the fans and see what it does.
Yeah, it's starting to go down. It's not a lot of drift. It's a pretty good percentage at 2 amps, but it's slow enough that it should be easy to deal with in the digital section. Definitely have to keep the CPU temperature in check, but that shouldn't be a problem. If the air temperature in the case gets to anything like that, I'm going to have some melted plastic. One more thing I want to check is my V-reference voltage here. This little DA converter has its own band gap voltage reference, and it's supposed to be around 16 parts per million a degree centigrade. The op amp buffer is not a zero drift, but it is a low drift type. I'm expecting around 20 microvolts a degree drift on my VREF node, but it could be a lot worse. Both the op amp and the DA converter just give typical values. I don't trust the reading while I'm spraying the air over it, but maybe dropping to a 1.2061 volts at the cold end. Looks like it peaks and then goes back down at extreme heat. Looks like I saw a 1.2072 at the high point. And then 1.054. But the 1.2054 is probably with it being well over the operating temperature. I'll let it cool slowly and see. Yeah, it looks like peak voltage is 1.2072 maybe 50 to 60 degrees between 1.2061 and 1.2072. Well, I guess they are typical parts. Very good. I routed this voltage reference to the microcontroller to use as a reference to compensate for the 3.3 volt rail drifting. But it looks like the 3.3 volt regulator is about as stable as the voltage reference. So don't think I will need to use it, but I might as a double check. I know the microcontroller does have its own band gap reference built in but I could not find out what kind of temperature drift it had. So I decided to try this one. I think it's pretty good for a cheap little device. Two 8-bit DACs and a voltage reference for less than $2. The constant current mode of operation should really be the simplest to implement. The MOSFET power modules are really just voltage to current converters. Just need to supply the right amount of voltage to them and they should do the rest. Unlike the other modes, constant voltage, power, and resistance, I want to let the power modules do the tracking of the current for the constant current mode. So what I need is a starting voltage and then a bit of adjustment for error and drift. I don't want my adjustment to fight with the power modules and cause oscillations. So we'll probably do a pretty slow update for error and drift. Now to get that voltage, I've decided to break this DAC value to current curve into line segments. With more segments at the lower end, where there is more curve, I think that will get me close and the math shouldn't be too bad. Let's see if this works out. I'm going to try this segment here. It looks nice and straight. I'll leave out that data point I think I messed up. We'll have to redo that at some point, or maybe I can just skip it. So the start of the line is at 15.57 amps and a DAC value of 1300. The end of the segment is at 20.87 amps and a DAC value of 1500. The value we will have is the current setting coming from the display I.O. board. And there are no floating points. So the 15.57 amps becomes 1557 and the 20.87 amps becomes 2087. Now to the line formula. X is going to be the current setting value and Y will be the DAC value. The slope of the line, M, will be 200 over 530. I'll round that off to 0.3774. So to get C, We'll take 1500 minus 0.3774 times 2087, a bit over 712, so we'll go with 712. So the formula should be something like this, but again, no floating point. So the 0.3774 will turn into 3774, 0.3774 times 10,000. So the line of code to get the DAC value should be something like this. This processor has fast multiply and pretty fast divide. I'll have to check, but I doubt the compiler will use them. Maybe I'll be surprised. But probably we'll have to replace this with the build-in commands to use the specific instructions. But this will test to see if the idea works. So my code looks like this. For the under 100 milliamp, I'm using a lookup table. There's no part of the data in that area that is close to a line. At least I didn't think so. And I'm not going to worry too much about the below 500 milliamps right now. I think I'm going to have to break those areas down into smaller segments, or maybe just let the error correction, when I implement it, do the work. 
just a lot of curve in that area of the data. Now to see if the current values are anywhere near where they should be. The meter on the left is reading the voltage from my current shunt amplifier. This thing right down here. Best I can tell it reads 4.25% low. Should put out 100 millivolts per amp, but I'm getting about 95.92. So I'll correct that the slow way with a calculator. The thermometer in the middle is reading the exhaust air from one of the heat sinks. And we are at the ambient room temperature of 27.2 degrees centigrade. Yeah, it's a little warm in here. And the meter on the right is the voltage across the load terminals. I'm going to start at 500 milliamps. That will be a value of 50 that I will convert to the DAC register value. It's just been powered up. I'll give it a minute to stabilize before starting. My 0.5 amp setting is doing around 492 milliamps. 8 milliamps off. Not bad, but this is right at the end point of a line segment. At a 1 amp setting, I'm getting about 992 milliamps. I can live with that for sure. Don't think I can even correct for that small amount. Error is less than one step of the DAC. Here is a setting of 3 amps. This is in the middle of a line segment. And I'm reading 2.97 amps. Better than I was expecting. Temperature starting to rise just a bit. Around a 70 watt load here. I'm going to a setting of 4 amps. Let me fix the camera so I can actually see the display. So set on 4 amps is giving me 3.999. I'm going to list that as 4 amps a load. Looking like the ends of the line segments are very, very close. And that makes sense. It's not really a line on the graph. It is a slight curve. Okay, so here's another setting that is in the middle of a line of data. 6 amps. And I'm getting right at 5.95 amps. So 50 milliamps of error? Really less than 1%. That's not bad. Now at 8 amps, I'm back at the end of a line of data. And load is at 7.99 amps. That's probably as close as it can get. It's a definite pattern. The greatest error is in the middle of the line segment of data. Could break the line into smaller pieces, but is it even worth it? So far, it's not really looking like it. With it set to 12 amps, I'm back in the middle of a line segment. And I'm getting, say, 11.94 amps. That's what, a half a percent error? 60 milliamps off. So I can digitally correct for that and get a bit closer. But I really think that is quite good. Air is starting to feel a little warm, just a wee bit, at around 250 watts here. At a 20 amp setting here, I'm just getting into the last line segment. I have to say the entire area here on the bench is starting to feel a bit warmer. Putting out about 380 watts now. I've been taking readings every 1 amp, so close to 15 minutes of runtime now. So a 20 amp setting yields 19.98 amps. I'm very happy with that. I'll set it to 25 amps. Now I didn't have any data points above 22 amps. I just extended the line to 60 amps. I believe it should be a pretty straight line at this point. And it gives me 25.01 amps. That's nice. Okay, last test value. I'm over 500 watts here, and the terminals on the power supply start to get a little warm at this kind of load. Thirty amp setting yields thirty point zero six amps. That's what about a point two percent error. I sure can't ask for much more than that. Air temp is getting up there, forty two degrees C. That's a feels like one o seven or thereabouts. I do believe. It really is nice when things kind of work the way you planned them. 
much, much better than when there is the smell of burnt epoxy and then trying to figure out what went wrong. I much prefer this outcome. Good progress, I feel. Looks like I've got myself a very complex and expensive heater. Feels that way anyway. Thank you for watching.